Hello, my name is Dr. Brian Reid, and I'm a naturopathic doctor. And uh, someone recently posted a uh, question on uh, one of my other videos just asking what uh, can be done to address mold or marcons um, that might be colonizing a person's sinuses. Um, and so I thought I'd post a video just talking about uh, how I approach those issues. I've uh, talked about uh, sinus treatments for mold in uh, some past videos, but uh, I think a, a dedicated uh, sinus microbe treatment video um, is, it sounds like fun and sounds like it's warranted. Um, so uh, just for anyone who doesn't know, um, MARCONS is this uh, long-winded acronym uh, for multiple antibiotic resistance coagulase negative staphylococcus, um, which uh, basically means it's a species of staphylococcus bacteria, which uh, normally does exist in the uh, sinuses and on our skin and all over the place in our bodies. Um, but it's uh, just very, very resistant to antibiotics. So it's this really tenacious form of staphylococcus. Um, and it's something that uh, I'm sure others have talked about too, but the person that um, I know of who uh, started talking about this many moons ago um, is a medical doctor named Richie Shoemaker, who's uh, one of the godparents of um, uh, mold illness um, being in our in our awareness um, as clinicians. So he, he was one of the folks who uh, really kind of start, started that all essentially. Um, and so with the idea with Marcons is that um, it can exist as this persisting infection in the uh, sinuses and perpetuate um, a lot of the pro-inflammatory symptoms that we see with mold illness or chronic inflammatory response syndrome. So all the crazy symptoms that people can experience like neurological symptoms, um, headaches, uh, possibly uh, fatigue, um, you know, brain fog um, being a subset of neurological symptoms, possibly diffuse pain, sometimes digestive issues, the list can go on and on. Um, so. Um, when it comes to treating mold um, or marcons, um, the approach that I typically take is the same for both. Um, I usually will recommend using um, nasal, nasally applied uh, essential oils. Um, oftentimes it's as a nasal spray. Um, I'll oftentimes use frankincense essential oil because it seems to be one of the best tolerated um, essential oils. You can certainly, you know, working with your clinician, um, there are certainly other options that are out there. Um, I know one of my esteemed colleagues who is um, also, who, who is a mold expert who teaches, you know, mold uh, uh, training courses and whatnot, uh, Jill Krista, she's fantastic. Um, and um, she uh, has posted some videos about doing different essential oil blends. Um, I'm just not that fancy. I'll usually recommend just frankincense. It seems to work quite well. Um, in cases that are um, <clears throat> seemingly uh, plateaued or not responding as quickly or as fully as I'd like to see with frankincense nasal spray, um, I will usually then recommend the patients kick it up a notch and start using some essential oils in a nebulizer. Um, I'll oftentimes um, ask them to use thyme essential oil in the nebulizer um, because uh, thyme is, to my understanding, um, it's one of the more effective um, essential oils against uh, uh, different types of mold species. Um, so, but just with na with nasal spray, at least in my experience, when I uh, ha have a general rule in my practice where if I'm going to start recommending a therapy to a patient, um, if possible, I apply it to myself first. Um, and so when I was playing around with various nasal sprays, trying to get a high enough concentration of essential oil in, you know, diluted um, essential oil in a nasal spray, I found the time was just really, really caustic in a spray. Uh, the frankincense was much more tolerated, um, for me at least. I'm, I'm a big baby, um, so maybe everyone else out there could tolerate time, no problem. Um, but I, but uh, in a nebulizer, um, it's diffused over a you know more prolonged period of time, usually like 10 to 20 minutes, depending on the volume that's being used um, per treatment. Um, so it's diffused over that uh, period of time. Um, whereas with a spray, it's just a big whoomph right up the schnoz and it can be, it can be a little bit stingy. Um, so I'll usually recommend time nebulized essential oil. Um, and the advantage of that is if there, uh, so if if we're wanting to get maybe something that packs a bit more of a punch um, into the sinuses, the nebulizer can potentially do that because we can use time. We can also ultimately get a higher dose of essential oil per treatment up into the sinuses. But then I, ha I do have other patients where I have clinical suspicion that they might have um, an issue with mold and or maybe other microbes in their lungs. And so by using a nebulizer, they can wear a mask and get, you know, breathe in through their nose. But then with the amount of vapor that's being produced, then some of that's going to get down into the lungs as well. Um, so that that's another reason that a nebulizer might come into the mix. Um, so in terms of 
you know, how effective that is against uh, Markon specifically, where the sort of the traditional, uh, like the, the Dr. Shoemaker um, uh, sort of based protocol to go after um, Markons is using uh, something, uh, typically something called BEG spray, which is just an acronym for Bactroban, which is another name for Mepirocin, antibiotic, um, EDTA, which is a chelating agent, um, and um, uh, gentamicin which is a different type of antimicrobial agent. Um, those three agents combine together, they call it BEG spray, and you do you know, a certain number of sprays up, up your nose um, um, with a certain uh, frequency, um, and that, that's kind of the typical treatment. Um, that's a prescription-only um, treatment, and here in Nova Scotia, as naturopathic doctors, we unfortunately don't have access to um, uh, pharmaceuticals, um, and it's very challenging in Nova Scotia and surrounding area to gain access to sort of these we'll say like non-traditional or less traditional applications of pharmaceuticals. So a lot of our patients are uh, just don't have that as, a, as an option. And so um, as such, um, I've had to learn how to uh, deal with those types of microbes without the um, benefit of being able to access uh, pharmaceuticals when needed. Um, in my experience, using the essential oils um, is oftentimes um, very, very uh, effective. It seems to be more than adequate to um, resolve the um, uh, symptoms that seem to be associated with mold and or you know, possible markons or possibly other microbes. Um, there's certainly some um, uh, clinical evidence, um, if not maybe in the literature. I haven't had a chance to dive into that too much literature to look at in my limited spare time, uh, non, non-patient, non-family time. Um, but uh, I, to my understanding, there uh, is at least clinical evidence, if not in the literature, that um, other microbes, um, such as possi- possibly Borrelia or co-infections, could potentially live in biofilms in the sinuses as well. So when we're spraying things in the sinuses, um, I think that there might be a, a hodgepodge of microbes that might be up there. Um, and so um, with the uh, frankincense nasal spray or nebulized thyme essential oil, um, sometimes we do hit a plateau with either or both of those. And in that case, then I'll usually recommend that patients kick it up a notch and start using a biofilm disrupting nasal spray, which um, does have EDTA in it, just like the BEG spray, um, but it also has some other agents in it as well. Um, this uh, formula was put together by um, a couple of uh, naturopathic doctors in Ontario, uh, Chris and Sonia Doherty, and they, um, who are also brilliant and uh, for any clinicians listening uh, check them out online they have some um, online training uh, courses which I think are really valuable that uh, touch on uh, different areas of or uh, focus on different areas of complex chronic illness and autism spectrum disorder which is another area of focus of mine in practice too um, and in that formula that they put together they asked a compounding company to formulate um, it does have the EDTA as well as um, iodine uh, grapefruit seed extract uh, fairly high dose xylitol um, and so it has antimicrobial properties as well as some biofilm disrupting properties in large part because of that EDTA in there because chelators seem to help to break down um, uh, biofilms especially really tenacious ones so sometimes we do need to get the biofilm disrupting spray in there and what I'll um, oftentimes recommend is if the patient is on their say full dose uh, like full potency frankincense nasal spray and they're improved but they've hit a plateau then I'll recommend we'll get the um, uh, biofilm disrupting nasal spray uh, which has to be made by a compounding pharmacy because of the EDTA Um, and then we'll just put the frankincense essential oil in that spray and then they're getting kind of a two-for-one sort of treatment but getting onto that biofilm disrupting nasal spray can really pack a a wallop Um, it it can make things you know kind of go from zero to 60 in terms of possible herxing or detox symptoms so um, it is something that we kind of tread a bit lightly with um, to make sure that people aren't getting flared up so those are the agents that I will often times use in practice to help um, address uh, factors that might be growing in the sinuses and it can be an incredibly important part of a treatment protocol um, if the clinical history and and maybe supporting lab evidence uh, warrants it.